Hey everybody, hope you're having a wonderful day today. So in today's video, I wanted to discuss a product that really is one of a kind and uh, it, it really stands out in the market of big band and jazz libraries today. And that is the Screaming Trumpet by Realitone. Now this product was originally recorded by another company, but um, Mike from Realitone wanted to uh, kind of revamp it a little bit and package it just to include the main trumpet. And I think it's doing very well. And so the reason I really like this trumpet is because, um, well, it sounds great out of the box. Uh, number two, it's versatile in many styles. And number three, it's just playable once you get the hang of uh, the key switches and all that. So, you know, in typical Realitone fashion, they, they like to lay it out in ways that are very intuitive. And in this case, um, it, it's like a keyboard, right? And so you can see here, we have these different colors, the yellow, the green, and the red. And essentially the way it's laid out is that the yellows are your, going to be your, sorry, your basic sustains, uh, your different articulations of sustains. And here are just a couple here that uh, we can choose from. So by default, it goes to sustain. Now there, um, you might've heard some short notes, right? Some staccato notes. And the whole time I was still in the sustain mode, so I didn't have to key switch to staccato at all. So you can actually do a lot of your work just by using the sustain alone. Um, so yeah, these yellow notes are the, are the yellow key switches, are the sustain types. And then your green ones are your starting articulations, your note starts. So for example, if I'm clicking grace note, for example, then if I play a note, then you hear that it goes da da, then it introduces a little grace note before the note. The, the really cool thing is that um, the engine sets it up so that when you hold the key switch, the green key switch, it activates that articulation, but as soon as you let go, it defaults right back to the last key switch you selected for the yellow section here. So for example, if I had a growl and then I wanted to start use it with a bend, then I can play the bend, let go of the key switch, and it defaults right back to the sustain. So let's see if it works if I do it this way. So right now it's going back to sustain. So uh, where's the growl? Let's see. There it is. So let's see. So you see there, as soon as I click the growl there on my actual keyboard, um, I let go of the bend and then it defaulted right back to growl. So that's basically how the engine works and it's really smart that way. Um, but yeah, the regular sustain sounds excellent. And then here on your red side uh, with all these black keys are basically your um, ending articulations. And so your doits here, for example, is the uh, C sharp here. So if I play just sustains, Right, and then I press that key switch, the red one, um, then it actually it automatically activates that articulation. Now you might be thinking, well, that's not that many articulations. Well, you can go into the settings page here, and you can actually, you know, you see how all these articulations are mapped out, and so you can actually click on one, and you can choose from this whole list of recorded articulations, and so in that way, you have a very high chance of being able to, you know, play the exact phrase that you're looking for. So just to do a very basic example, what we can do is, for example, I'm going to hold a green one just to start. I'm going to play some sustains, and then I'm going to end the phrase with one of those red key switches. So. Right? So um, you, can, you can imagine how, with a little bit of practice, this could be very easy to do. Um, but yeah, so I started with you know a green key switch, and then I placed the sustains. I ended the phrase, and then I did another green key switch to start the next phrase. I think it was a long rise. Did some more sustains, and then I ended it with a long rise. And so in that way, it's a very basic um, phrase, but it kind of shows you the flexibility of the engine, which is awesome. Um, the legato, they gave you a true legato and a scripted legato, so you can play around uh, with the scripted legato if you want to get that really smooth sound across every single Note doesn't matter in the range, right? Actually, sounds really good. The true legato has that extra bit of. You can hear the little bit of extra noise in there. Okay. 
Um, about the sound itself, though, it's a very, very dry sound by default. If, if you turn out the reverb here, it's, it's like bone dry, so. Right, so there's basically like no tail at all. Uh, I think with a touch of reverb, it actually sounds really good. Right, so just a touch of um, reverb helps it to, to soften the, the sound just a little bit. Here you can play around with the different timbres. So let's try the dark three. Dark two. Dark one. Regular. So the normal is definitely a little more, uh, has a little more high end. I, I assume the dark has some maybe more low frequencies or some highs taken out and vice versa for the brights. Uh, that's pretty self-explanatory, but uh, but the, the great thing about this GUI is that there's really are only two pages, one for you to set up your different articulations however you like to, um, and just to adjust some reverb and vibrato. By the way, vibrato is, is um, automatically mapped to the mod wheel as you can see here. So if I hold a note, push it up, then you hear the vibrato there. Right? And you can affect the, the speed or if you want to. Um, that, or that was the pitch, but here you can affect the speed. So that's way too fast. <laughs> right, that's a kind of good speed there. Um, so it's very tweakable. It's completely up to you. And uh, that's why I really like how flexible this library is. It, I mean, the most important thing, obviously, is the sound. And sound-wise, it sounds wonderful. And it's uh, very, very flexible. You know, people always ask, is it better to have a dry library or a library recorded in a room? And, you know, while you can argue both ways, in for this context, I think we would naturally prefer a drier sound just so we can place the, the instrument into the room of our choice. If it's pre-recorded in a room with a really long tail, with a really long natural tail, it's kind of difficult to take out that room sound completely and then replace it in a new room. So um, in this case, it's, it's a it's kind of a natural way to, to record it. And I really like the uh, the approach that Real, Realitone took here. So definitely give this a look, guys. It's it's a very cool library. Um, again, it's, it's very easy to set up your own articulations and the way you like it and to perform your own phrases. It's a breeze. With just a little bit of practice, you can do it. And of course, if you didn't want to, if you want to separate it into different tasks, then you can just play in your phrase. And then afterwards, after you record that, then you can record in the key switches um, individually to help you create the most realistic performance. Uh, one last note I forgot to say is that I like how the softer you play, the softer the samples are. And the louder you play, or the harder you play, it's the la you know, it activates the louder samples. And it's just it's just very intuitive that way, right? Like you would expect that. Um, as a pianist for you to play harder and you activate a louder or you get a louder sound, right? So same way in this kind of library, which is awesome. Um, so it's velocity based is what I'm trying to say. But hopefully you enjoyed this uh, little overview, little review of the library. Again, it's very versatile um, and it doesn't only do the jazz stuff well, it can also go nice and soft and um, with some EQ, you can make it really warm and lush, you know? So it's a very tweakable instrument. Um, in any case, I you know, I hope you enjoyed this. And if you have any questions about the instrument, please let me know down below. Um, and until the next time, I'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye.